X-Men Gold number 7 by Mark Guggenheim and Ken Lashley. There was a time when Magneto terrorized the humans in Central Park, but today, in that very same spot, a team of X-Men play yet another tired game of softball. Kitty talks to her old crush Colossus about his injuries when suddenly a cloud forms over the New York skyline. Meanwhile, inside the mansion, Prestige lets a shocked Nightcrawler know his feelings for her are mutually received. To fight the enemy in the last issue, she had to take her telekinetic powers to a place she'd never achieved before. More powerful than even her future hound self can even have gotten to. And just then, a student runs in to tell them that there's a disturbance outside. The team heads back to the mansion, and after a talk with Doctor Strange, the disturbance turns out to be a warp field over the city, keeping everyone inside. Kitty orders everyone into small teams to assist, but before that, matters in the mansion require their attention. Bale and a young mutant storm brought to the school has been murdered. Kitty explains to everyone that it's likely part of a mutant serial killer on a loose that Logan and Storm have been investigating, and now it's apparently inside the mansion. On the streets of New York, Logan reminisces with Aurora over things they've seen, things they've been around. Maybe there's an end game for him. The conversation will have to wait, though, as he springs into action with claws drawn. He smells a demon and quickly guts it. He manages to get up pretty quickly, and the two X-Men know they're about to have a fight on their hands. Storm hits it with lightning, and an injured but older Logan might need a minute to recover. Meanwhile, Nightcrawler runs from an enraged crowd, a scene that has probably been recreated in these pages, these very books at least 25 times, but like softball games, who's counting? Back at the mansion, the killer finds the non-mutant lizard man from the Brotherhood as the X-Men find another dead mutant. Rachel can feel the killer's rage, and as he attacks another mutant, this time Kitty is there to confront him. She kicks him with a brutal roundhouse, and before he can fire at her, she's able to request help. Rachel punches him as well as he's brought down by a punch to the back of the head by Peter. The hit isn't long-lasting, and as he fires the gun at Colossus' head, he left the hope that he managed to turn metallic just in time as this issue is left to be concluded. You know, all the lame softball games aside, this is finally starting to feel like the real X-Men showed up. Who would have thought that Kitty Pride of all people, would be able to lead such a legendary lineup, but she's doing it with confidence. Mark Guggenheim is really starting to heat up as a writer, and Ken Lashley is probably the established ex penciler this series has deserved all along. With all of it finally starting to fall into place, I give this one a well deserved 9 out of 10. If you like this video, there's hundreds more like it, spanning several current and classic story arcs. Click the boxes here for more playlists. This video is also accompanied by my blog at nerdyskidyouknow.blogspot.com or nerdyskidyouknow.com. You can also follow links to my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter pages, as well as a link to this very issue for sale on my eBay page by clicking below. For the nerdiest kid you know, I'm Sam Torito. Thanks for watching.